This video is for 5.7 scatter plots. Our goals are that we can write an equation of a trend line and also use a trend line to make predictions. So first, let's define what a scatter plot is. It is a graph that relates two different sets of data by displaying them as ordered pairs. So it's two different sets of data's, data and we're going to look at ordered pairs and how they're related to each other. This is usually located in the first quadrant which means the x and y values are both positive, and we use a scatter plot to find trends or patterns in data. Correlation is a measure of the strength of relationship between two quantities. So x and y are the quantities, and there is a correlation or a relationship between the two quantities. The first one located on the left side, as y increases, x increases, and vice versa. So you can see that the data points are going up generally. Just like a positive slope, this is called a positive correlation. The next one, as x increases, y decreases. You can see that the scatter plot or the points are going down. So that means we're going to have a negative correlation, just like a negative slope slants down as well. In the last graph, we have random points. You can see that it's not positive or negative, so we call this no correlation. And this is because the x and the y values are not related to each other. So you want to identify which one is positive, negative, and, or no correlation. And below, you may be wondering, what is an example of this? Well, this is a really helpful example for all of you. The more a student studies, the higher the student's grades tend to be. So there is a correlation between the time spent studying and grades. It would actually be a positive correlation because as the number of hours of studying increases, the higher the grade is. So the lesson for this is you need to study and actually take good notes and try your best. We're ready for example one. The table shows the altitude of an airplane and the temperature outside the plane. So as the altitude increases, the temperature decreases. Interesting. Um, we're going to make a scatter plot and then talk about what kind of scatter plot or correlation this is. So what we're going to do is label the y-axis. I went up by 10, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And now we're going to plot all of those points you can see in the table. So I'm going to pause and do that now. All right, we have those points plotted. The altitude's on the x-axis and the temperature's on the y. Part B says, what type of relationship does the scatter plot show? Well, as I mentioned before, the temperature outside the plan, plane tends to decrease as the altitude of the plane increases. So you can see that the points are generally going down. That reminds you of a negative slope. So that means we have a negative correlation. All right, now let's talk about what a trend line is. A trend line is a line on a scatter plot drawn near the points that show a correlation. So you can see on the left side, we have a positive correlation and a line, trend line, it has a positive slope. And on the right side, we have a negative correlation. The points are going down and we have a negative slope on that line. Now we're ready for example two about pandas. Make a scatter plot of the data at right. What is the weight, approximate weight, of a seven month old panda? Our first step is that we want to make a scatter plot and draw a trend line. Now when we draw this trend line, there should be about the same number of points above the line as below it. So now we are going to plot the points in the table. Okay, we have our points plotted and now we are going to draw the trend line. We have our trend line drawn now and what we want to do is find two points on the trend line and write down their coordinates. So the ones that I'm looking at right now are 4, 17.1, and 8, 
37.9. Now when you choose different points, if you don't choose these two points, then you're going to get a different answer. Our trend line is going to be an estimation of the actual scatter plot. So now our step two is we're going to write an equation of the trend line using our slope intercept knowledge. So let's get started. First thing that we want to do is find the slope. So we're going to use m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Sorry about that. Okay, we need to label our points x1, y1, x2, y2. Now we're going to plug those in, so 37.9 minus 17.1 on top and 8 minus 4 on bottom. And that is going to equal 20.8 over 4. That equals 5.2. So the slope of our trend line is going to be 5.2. Now we need to know how to find our y-intercept. So let's do that y equals mx plus b. Instead of putting the m, we're going to be putting the 5.2. Now which point would we like to plug in for the x and the y? Well, we might as well plug in the first one that we used, 4 comma 17.1. So the 17.1 goes in for the y, and the 4 goes in for the x. And when you multiply um, you get 20.8 and you subtract 20.8 to the other side and we find out that our B value, sorry it's writing horribly here, our B value is negative 3.7. So our equation is going to be Y equals 5.2 X minus 3.7. Now you may be wondering why in the world are we doing this? Well we're finding the equation of a line and then what we're about to do, we're so close to the answer, is plug in the 7 because the whole goal was to estimate the weight of a 7 month old panda and X stands for the months. So now we're going to go over to this other corner and now plug in 7. So we have step 3, we're going to estimate the weight of seven month old panda and that means we're plugging in the seven for the X and when we do our math we get 36.4 minus 3.7 and that equals 32.7 so the weight of a seven month old panda is about 32.7 pounds now we're going to write that and we'll be done with this Now let's talk about what causation is. Causation is when a change in one quantity causes a change in a second quantity. So the blank for this is causation and the main word or part of that is cause. One thing causes another thing to change. Now a correlation between quantities does not always imply that there is causation. So now let's take a look at example four. This is the last example. We technically skipped example three in the textbook, um, so we're moving on to example four. And now let's read this together. In the following situations, is there likely to be a correlation? If so, does the correlation reflect a causal relationship? Now, you should be right here, causal, not casual. Okay, explain. Part A says the number of loaves of bread baked and the amount of flour used. So as the amount of flour used increases, the number of loaves of bread baked also increases. So this would be a positive correlation. Now the question is, is this a causal relationship? Does the amount of flour used affect or cause the number of loaves of bread to change? And the answer to that question is yes, it is a causal relationship. One affects the other. Okay, and now let's just write a conclusion sentence. We're just explaining our answer and then we'll go on to the second side. 
As I mentioned before, the number of loaves of bread increases and the amount of flour used increases as well. Positive correlation and causal relationship. Now let's take a look at the other side, the number of mailboxes and the number of firefighters in a city. Well, think about it. If there are more mailboxes, that means there's more houses. And then that also means that if there's more houses, there's more firefighters in the city. So this is likely a positive correlation because the number of mailboxes and the number of firefighters tends to increase as the population of the city increases. So let's write that and then we'll continue talking about this. Now let's talk about this and figure out if it is a causal relationship. So does the number of mailboxes cause the number of firefighters to increase? The answer to that question is no. Installing more mailboxes will not cause the number of firefighters to increase. So there is no causal relationship. Now you may be wondering, what is a variable that will have both a correlation and a causal relationship besides the bread problem that we just did? An example um, with the mailboxes would be if the number of mailboxes and the number of stops made by the postal trucks in a city was related. Obviously, if there's more mailboxes, the postal uh, person, mailman, mailwoman, is going to make more stops. So that would have a relationship, uh, causal relationship, and a correlation. So, question for you, how can predictions be made from correlated data? Well, usually we write an equation of a line, of a trend line, and then we can use that to make predictions, just as we did in the Panda problem. Thanks for sticking with me. We have the 5.7 lesson check. Feel free to work on this now or wait until we do problems like this together during class. Just make sure that you have done 5.6 lesson check. See you soon.